this video, we're going to teach the kids how to make this really fun little dinosaur. Now, the idea with the dinosaur is it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Your child's is going to look very different to mine because most of the pattern is freehand drawn. So you'll find that you've got longer tails or longer necks or shorter heads and longer legs, um, which makes it so much fun, but it makes it really personal as well. It's, it's almost like having um, a child's drawing that then turns into a toy. And I think it makes it more personal for them to make as well. Um, I'm still using felt in this tutorial because it doesn't fray like with the previous projects and it's really easy to work with. But this time we're going to make something that the child is, is almost designed all by themselves. Um, there is a little bit of gluing involved. Now I've used a Gutterman HT2 glue which is a really strong glue so I would advise anytime you're sewing buttons on or anytime you've got things like legs which have been hand sewn on you put a little bit of really strong glue just behind the stitches to stop them coming off. Um, but the stitches that you're going to sew through which are the ones that hold all the spines in place I've used my wet glue again, but you could use um, an erasable uh, glue stick, so a repositionable glue stick if you find that's going to be a little bit easier. Or even something like a Pritt stick is going to be absolutely fine for this, as long as you can sew through it and it holds the pieces together. But why not make it really personal? Um, you could add more cross stitches. You could make a face. I've just put two little eyes on there, but you could easily add a smile. Um, and just to mention as well, there is quite a bit of cutting involved. So obviously, if you've got uh, very young children, you may want to do the cutting with scissors first of all. Um, and I do use pins to hold the pieces together. So they've got to contend with not just a sharp needle, but sharp pins as well, which I am sure they're going to be fine with. But just to make you aware, there are going to be some sharp implements used in this one. So you may need to help out there. But let's take a look at uh, the materials list. And then let's get sewing our dinosaur. The first thing we're going to do is make a pattern. Now this doesn't have to be any particular size and the dinosaur can look just like you want it to look like. So it can be very, very big or it can be very, very small. But what I'm going to do is to draw a straight line like that. Then I'm going to draw a semicircle, which is half a circle, like that. Now you could draw around a plate uh, or a saucer if you find that easier, but that's going to be the body of my dinosaur. Then I'm going to draw a tail. So the tail is going to go right up to the end of my paper, like that. So that straight line carries on and that goes up to the semicircle. And then on this side, I'm going to draw a head. So let's draw a neck and a big round head like that. So can you see it's starting to look a little bit like a dinosaur? So when you're happy with your shape and try and keep it nice and fat, make him a fat dinosaur. We're going to cut this out of the paper. I'm just going to go round into that neck bit and then around the head. Your dinosaur could have a really big long neck. And you could have a very short neck. You could make his tail really, really long. Or you could keep it really, really short. So that's my dinosaur body. And then I'm going to draw some dinosaur legs. So I'll use the same piece of paper. And I'm just going to cut out, let me draw it first, a rectangle. That doesn't have to be perfect. And we'll see how that looks for a leg. So you try it with your dinosaur. You see what you think looks good. So that's quite a big chunky leg. So it's going to have four of those. So I'll need to cut out eight pieces. But what I'm going to do as well, you see where it's got corners at the top here? I'm going to cut those round just at the top. And that's going to make the top of his leg round when it goes onto the body like so. So let's cut these out of felt 
and I will need two pieces for the body. So I'm going to cut those out together and I'm going to need how many for the legs? He's got four legs and I need two pieces for each leg. So two times four is I'm going to hold this down with a pin and be careful because they're sharp and then we're going to cut all around the edge. It doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't matter if your dinosaur looks a little bit bigger. Go around the head. So if you don't want to use pins, you could draw around the edge of your paper. So draw the pattern onto the felt and then cut it out. Let's cut down here. There. So if you didn't want to do it like that, you can draw around the edge onto the felt. And it doesn't matter what you draw with because you can turn that bit onto the inside so that you don't see the pen mark. Just make that nice and neat. And then we'll take the pins out and take that off. And we'll save that pattern for another dinosaur. Now we'll need to cut out some legs. And I can do these two at a time as well. So I can pin that again or I can just draw around the edge and then cut it out. So that's two. I'm going to use this one to draw around now because felt sticks to felt better than paper sticks to felt. So it makes it easier to cut. So that's one leg, two legs, that's three legs, And that is four legs. You can cut them out one at a time if you think that's going to be easier. There. That one's not quite straight. It's a bit lumpy on the bottom, so I'm just going to make that straight. There. So now I have one, two, three, four legs. And we're going to make the legs first of all. So do you remember with your thread, this is embroidery thread, how we split it in half? So there's six strands of thread here and I'm pulling two lots of three. So just very gently keep pulling and pulling and splitting and splitting until I've gone all the way down the thread. Now save the other piece for later and then we'll take our needle and push the thread through the eye of the needle and pull it through, not all the way through, just so I've got a long bit on the end and do you remember how we tie a knot? Hold the thread, hold the needle, hold the two together with one hand and go one, two, three and then push the needle through 
and then the knot goes right down to the bottom and I'm just going to cut off the end bit. Now you can use whatever stitch you like to sew all of it together because we've learnt a running stitch and a back stitch and a blanket stitch and an over edge stitch and you can use any one of those stitches to hold them together. So on the legs I'm going to do a running stitch. So I've got my two pieces of felt together like that and I'm going to start with a needle inside the two pieces so you don't see the knot and let's pull that through. Now these stitches need to be really small. So we go in and out, in and out and they need to be small because we're going to put some toy filler inside and we don't want the toy filler coming out. So keep them close together close to the edge and we're going to sew all the way around here but we're not going to sew the foot at the moment. Now when I'm coming into the corner I'm going to stop sewing just there but leave the needle on the end of the thread and then we're going to open this up and take a little piece of toy filler and push it inside like that. So we don't want to make it too fat but we want to make the legs strong enough so that he can stand up. So I think just a little bit more that's it. Then I'm going to push that right inside and then squish the leg closed and then I'm going to carry on sewing. So it doesn't matter if these hairy bits stick out a little bit because we can cut those off afterwards. So again just keeping my stitches as small as I can just so that that stuffing doesn't come out again. Almost finished. Keep the stitches nice and tight as well. Like that. Right back to the beginning. And do you remember how we like to hide the knot so we can't see it? So I'm going to take the needle in between the, those two pieces of felt So we open that felt hook, can you see that? That's the knot where I started. And I'm going to get in and out, but not pull the needle all the way through. Let's wrap that around the needle two times and then pull it out. And then we cut that off and the knot goes inside so you don't see it. So that's one leg. We need to do exactly the same with number two, with number three, and with number four. Legs one, two, three, four. Now we're going to put these on the side of the body. One there, and one there. So he's going to look like that. And then on the other side, this needs to face the opposite way and put them in the same place on each side. So I think it's easy if you have a little bit of glue. Now, what we don't want to do is to put these too close to the edge because we're going to sew down here. So when we put the legs on, we need to be able to move that out of the way so that we can sew underneath. So I'm just going to put a little dot of glue just on the back here like that and pop it there. And the same with this one and put it there. 
and I'm just going to leave that to dry but only put the glue right at the very top and then the same on this side remember they have to face opposite ways so blob of glue and try to put them in the same place otherwise you might have wonky legs and a blob of glue. So I've got two dinosaurs that look like that. I'm going to leave that to dry for just a minute and I'm going to make some spines to go down his back. So take your piece of felt, your scissors, and we're going to cut a box quite a long one and that's about two centimeters wide maybe three centimeters wide and I'm going to cut across the corner I don't need that piece and then that way and that way can you see I'm cutting triangles And these are going to go along my dinosaur's back. So he's going to have spines all the way down his back. So I didn't need all of those. I think that's going to be enough. Now I'm going to glue those on again, but I need to glue them to the other side of the leg. Okay, so let's turn this over and I'm going to put a little bit of glue all the way down the edge of the dinosaur's back, just up to his neck, like that. And then put your spines on. like that. Oh, it's going to have five spines, my dinosaur is. And then we'll leave that to dry. So remember the spines go on one side and the legs go on the other side. When that's dry, going to sew the legs on. Now do you remember when we first did the running stitch in one of the other videos and we did a cross stitch and we did a cross stitch which is like a running stitch. A running stitch is a straight stitch and a cross stitch goes across and that was the same stitch that we made a button with wasn't it? I'm going to put a cross stitch in the top of these legs. So take your needle from the back and I've already got my knot in the end. And just like you were sewing a button on, I'm going to come up through the back and see my needle coming through and pull it through and then go back down about a centimetre away and push that all the way through to the back. Okay, and pull that nice and tight and that's my needle at the back. And then just like with the button, you're going to come back up again and make a cross shape. So that goes there, pull it nice and tight and then that goes back in again there. And then I can tie a knot at the back. So in and out, but don't take the needle all the way through. One, two times around the needle and pull that through. Then we're going to do the same with the other leg, so I'll need another knot in my thread. Come through from the back, make a big centimetre stitch and go back in again. And then make a cross. I 
and come back to the other side. And then we tie a knot in the back. And we'll do the same with this side. So tie a knot in my thread. My needle's come undone. Let's thread that needle again. So from the back, so the knot's at the back, make a big stitch, pull it tight, and then go the opposite way to make a cross and tie a knot in the back. And then one more leg and all his legs are on. Big stitch, back through, big stitch, there's my needle, pull it tight and make a knot. Now he's starting to look like a dinosaur, isn't he? going to need some eyes next. So I've got two little black buttons and those are going to go right in the middle of his head. So let's tie a knot. You can draw a mark if you like where you think the eye should go. I think there. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. So that looks like there. So just like I did with the legs, come in from the back with your needle. Put the button on before you pull the needle through. And then go back again in the other hole. And there's his eye. So we'll tie that in a knot at the back. Do you remember the French knots we did in one of the, the other videos? You could do a French knot for an eye if you like. Or you can buy eyes. Now the kind of eyes that you get on toys. You have to make sure that they're stuck on really well though because we don't want these eyes coming off, do we? So I'm using really, really strong thread that's not going to come undone. But what you could do, and I'll show you in a minute, if you've got some very strong glue like I have, you can put some glue just behind the button just to make sure that that eye is never going to come off. So there's my second eye. My eye. And if you have got some very strong glue, only a tiny little bit, bend the button so it's away from the fabric. Let me show you that again. Whoops. So bend the button away and put a blob of glue there and then fold it back again. And that just means that the eye will be really, really stuck on. Right, now we need to sew these two pieces together. So let's put these two pieces together like that. So the legs are on the outside Okay, and I'm going to use that running stitch again and I'm going to sew all the way around the edge apart from a little bit underneath his tummy because that's where I'm going to put the stuffing in. It might be easier just to put some little pins there to hold the pieces together. Put the pins right in the middle so all of the edge pieces are together and put the pins right in the middle because you don't want to you don't have to spike your fingers with those. 
like that. Okay, so it's all pinned up. And then let's start to sew. So let's start just at the bottom of the tail here. And just like before, I'm going to go inside those two pieces and hide my knot inside there. And then I'm going to go in and out. All the way through. Whoops. And I'm going to sew this all the way around until I get back to the front legs again. So I'm just coming up to the front leg. So I'll just get a little bit closer and then I'm going to stop and put some stuffing inside him. So let's just go a little bit further here. Just so that I'm just inside the leg. So I've, I've still got a nice big gap so I can put my stuffing inside. Okay, I'll stop there. And I'm not going to take the needle off. And you can see I've got a big opening in his tummy. So let's take some of my toy filler and just do a little bit at a time. And you're going to push this inside here and go all the way down to the end of his tail. If you can't get your finger all the way down there, then you can use something like a, a pencil or a, a pen with its lid on and push the toy filler right down. But do little tiny bits. Don't do one big lump because it won't go in very easily if you do that. So push that into his tail and then we'll push the next one into his head and we'll do his tummy last of all. There you go. So make him nice and fat. Takes a lot of toy filler to make him fat. But this is why we needed those little tiny stitches. Because if you do small stitches, small stitches are strong. They make a strong seam. And if you do big stitches, when you start pushing the toy filler in now, he'll, um, he'll burst. His toy filler will come out. Right, so you can see I've nearly filled him up. I can still fit a little bit more in there, I think. Just squash it all in. And then we can sew the rest of this close. I'm going to have to hold all of that that toy filler in and go in and out. See, this is why we didn't put the legs too close to the edge because we still need to sew this together. So we can move the legs out of the way a bit and just sew the edges together under here. If you want to do an over edge stitch, then that might be easier. View out of the way. Just close all of that up. There you go. Oh, I've got that wrapped around his leg. That's it. Almost finished. So you can see I'm just sewing those two sides together just with my running stitch going in and out. Move the legs out of the way if they get in the way, that's okay. And pull the stitches nice and tight. In and out. Don't worry if the legs get caught, you can always undo them. In and out. So take your time. Still keep the stitches really small if you can. Move the legs out of the way. That's easier. Oh, 
almost there. There, and just like before, I'm going to take my thread in between the two pieces of felt and then tie my knot inside so you can't see it from the outside. And there we go. So there's my knot, just like before. And let's cut that off. My dinosaur's finished. <laughs>